I just received my diabetes diagnosis. My blood sugar levels are elevated. My fasting glucose is high and my A1C shows diabetes levels, which reflects average blood sugar over the past 90 days. In this video, I'll share nine changes I'd make to manage this condition. So I'm answering a common question you often ask. If I were diabetic, what would I do? That's our topic today. We'll have a straightforward, honest chat. I'll speak as if I were diabetic, okay? So here are nine changes I'd make. First, if I were diabetic, I'd only drink water and calorie-free beverages. Why? By doing this, you'll cut many calories from your diet and eliminate simple sugars. When you drink soda or juice, even 100% fruit juice, you're consuming lots of simple carbs and sugars that spike your blood sugar and add calories. If you're diabetic, or if I were diabetic, I'd cut these out. I don't need to drink juice like grape or orange or soda. I don't miss them at all. I'd stick to zero calorie drinks or lemon flavored water, sparkling water with orange slices, which have much less sugar, or even zero sugar drinks like diet soda, which is far better than regular soda. This brings up the question of whether diet soda is actually healthy or not. Studies show that to experience any harm from diet soda or those effects people mention online, you'd need to drink over 30 cans daily. Some studies even suggest this amount could be higher, up to 80 cans per day. So, if you occasionally have a can of diet soda, say once a week, it won't harm your health. For me, I'd allow it. While cutting other drinks, I'd mix it up with low glycemic juices like lemon or passion fruit, but prefer flavored or sparkling water. Once a week, I'd enjoy a soda too. I'm just sharing my approach here, not saying you have to do the same. I'm not telling anyone to do this, okay? Don't drink zero calorie soda just because I mentioned it. I'm just saying what I do, but I'd prefer water. Number two, I'd do more weightlifting at the gym. Why? If I increased my muscle mass, I could improve my blood sugar levels. You've probably noticed that many athletes are protected from diabetes. It's rare to see a marathon runner or soccer player with type 2 diabetes. It's not age, but lifestyle. Why? Because they have more muscle mass and better body composition. There was even a study on sumo wrestlers. You know those guys? They're heavy but they also have a lot of muscle mass. So if you compare sumo wrestlers to people with the same BMI, they're less likely to have diabetes than those who don't exercise. Muscle mass and body composition are crucial in diabetes management. If I had high blood sugar, I'd focus on that, okay? I'd try to add more strength training activities. What's my fitness routine like since we're talking about me? I usually run three days a week, about 10 kilometers each time. I love running. I also do weight training three or four days a week. I'd focus more on weightlifting, maybe run once a week and do strength training five or six days to build muscle mass. The third thing I do if I were diabetic is subscribe to Dr. Joao's channel. And also like this video, hit that like button to help spread this information. Jokes aside, let's move on to number three. But if you're not subscribed, consider it. I wouldn't tell others I'm diabetic. Let me explain. This is just for me, all right? Why? Because diabetics often suffer from unsolicited opinions and advice. Sometimes you tell a coworker or someone not so close and they give you advice they think will work. But with diabetes, there are many myths. So this info is likely wrong and could do more harm than good. When I talk to diabetics, I find that most of what they hear online is false or mythical. This can seriously harm your treatment and even discourage you. Understanding the disease makes treatment much easier. So I wouldn't tell others for this very reason. Who would I tell? My family and those who live with me as it's beneficial since they can help. I'd tell those in my house mainly because of the dietary aspects. Oh, can you help me during this time I'm trying to control? Because if there are no sweets at home, it's easier for you to control yourself. Yes. If you eat healthy and people around you don't tempt you to eat sweets or break your diet, I know it's easier. This often happens. Has it happened to you? Patients tell me this all the time. There's someone living with me or close to me who keeps tempting me to eat sweets, ultra-processed foods, and sugar. It happens. So to avoid this, I'd tell people close to me to help, but I wouldn't tell others. That would be my approach. It's not absolute truth, but I think in my case, it would help. Number four. 
I wouldn't seek any kind of supplement. Understanding type 2 diabetes and its mechanisms, I wouldn't seek a magic solution. Many people harm themselves by trying supplements that claim to cure diabetes, wasting money and risking their health. In reality, lifestyle changes are crucial for diabetes. It's about what you do to control risk factors and reverse what led to your diabetes. It's vital that you grasp this concept. So, I'd avoid supplements promising easy diabetes cures or control. They don't work, and I wouldn't use them. As a diabetic, I wouldn't try any quick fixes or miracle cures. Many can harm you, not just financially, but also health-wise. Number five, avoid sugar and simple carbs. This is a very practical measure. I'm not a sweets fanatic, so it's easy for me. I do this already, though not diabetic. If I were, I'd pay extra attention to simple carbs and sugars. When we talk about carbs, we're also talking about sugars. They're synonymous. It's just different wording. When you eat carbs or sugar, your body digests it and raises blood sugar. If you're diabetic, you need to be extra careful. I'm not suggesting total carb or sugar restriction or the keto diet. The keto diet, where you can't eat sugar, can be dangerous for diabetics, especially if you use insulin, okay? You should talk to your doctor and nutritionist about these issues. But restrictive diets are very challenging. It's tough to completely cut out carbs and never eat them again while staying healthy. The key is moderation. Avoid simple carbs, but keep eating complex carbs with fiber. They have less impact on blood sugar. The insulin spike itself isn't the problem. The issue is when your body can't process the insulin leading to high blood sugar levels, got it? So as a diabetic, you saw my test results at the start, I'd avoid refined sugar. I wouldn't use any sugar and I'd skip cakes and flour-based foods for now to stabilize my blood glucose levels. Number six, stay hydrated. I'd be very careful about my fluid intake, especially water. Why? For two reasons. First, if you're diabetic, you're more likely to get dehydrated than someone without diabetes. The rate of dehydration in diabetes is very high. Why? Because your kidneys try to balance high blood sugar levels especially when they're over 180 MGRDL or 10 MMOL, depending on your country's measurement system. These values are equivalent. After these levels, kidneys start to expel sugar in urine. With glucose, you lose water too. You'll get dehydrated even if you're drinking normally, okay? If you don't fix this, drink more fluids and hydrate better, you're more likely to become dehydrated. Also, our brain can mix up thirst signals with hunger cues. So if you're dehydrated, you might overeat, which worsens your control. Hydration has many benefits for diabetics, so I'd focus on that, all right? In my case, I'd aim to drink at least three liters of water daily. Number seven, if I were diabetic, I'd prepare my own meals. Currently, I eat out going to restaurants or food courts for lunch. It's harder to control ingredients, portions, and overall meal content there. If diagnosed today, I'd start packing lunch to avoid eating out. Now, I don't prep meals as my health checks are good, so I don't see the need. But if I had the diagnosis, everything would change. I'd start preparing meals carefully, watching sodium, carbs, calories, and fats. I'd avoid saturated fats, which increase calories and cardiovascular risk. Diabetics need to pay special attention to this. Number eight, I'd be careful about the type of diabetes information I consume. As a diabetes specialist, I advise you to always check if the doctor speaking is an endocrinologist or a specialist in the field. If you follow a nutritionist, it's crucial for diabetes. Check if they're properly trained and knowledgeable. So first thing, research the professionals. I'm not saying they're trying to deceive you or anything like that, not at all. Often, even well-meaning doctors with good intentions who really want to help might lack the necessary knowledge, causing more confusion than assistance. Always research the professionals whose information you're consuming. Are they experts? Do they actually work in that field? Or did they just skim an article and try to explain it? Number nine. And the last thing I'd do if I were diabetic, I'd be very careful with diabetes tests. Be cautious as many people rush glycated hemoglobin tests. This can cause more confusion than help. Glycated hemoglobin shows average blood sugar over the last 90 days. Taking the test too early can lead to confusion. For instance, if you test after just 30 days, it might not reflect reality. Also, 
Many people get anxious about glucose meter tests, often checking too frequently. Only your doctor can determine how often you should test. So follow their recommendations on timing and necessary tests. Do you use a glucose meter? Want more info? This video covers common mistakes and precautions when using a glucose meter. Interested in learning more? Then watch this video. I'm sure you'll find it helpful. If you use one, you should definitely check it out. Take care. Bye for now.